from my heaviest to uh, my leanest, um, it was 385 pounds. That was back in 2016. That was at my heaviest. And I lost a total of 165 pounds, all natural, through diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. And what kickstarted that was I just basically reached my lowest point. Just mentally, I wasn't happy uh, health-wise. You know, I wasn't sleeping right because of that weight. And, you know, drinking a lot, eating the wrong food in combination with those choices. And, you know, I just came to my end with that. I just wanted to change. One more Rolling With Tay podcast? Well, follow on Instagram and Twitter at Rolling With Tay. Visit the blog rollingwithtay.wordpress.com for more content and be sure to sign up for the monthly newsletter. And lastly, subscribe to the YouTube channel Rolling With Tay. This is the Rolling With Tay podcast. I'm your host, Tasia, a.k.a. Tay, and this is episode 10, and my guest is Harry. I met Harry at the Fireborough bike tour packet pickup <laughs> um and i saw him walking around and he had this qr code on the back of his sweatshirt and i asked him about it and here we are <laughs> his qr code linked to his youtube channel that everyone needs to go subscribe to but welcome to the podcast thanks for being a guest thanks for having me Tate. appreciate it appreciate okay. the shout out of course, of course. Um, we had a good conversation um, at the packet pickup, which led to this interview. But um, I, that 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 marketing, that branding, is very smart. <laughs> it's very smart. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Yeah, it was. Um, it gives it gives it that veil mystique, you know, with the QR code, and definitely catches eyes, and it's easy to. And modern to take you to your socials, which yeah. is using your cell phone on. Yeah, exactly. Instead of telling people to um, type in your your Instagram name or your YouTube name, I just scans QR code on the back of his sweatshirt. <laughs> so that's very smart. That's very smart. So makes you feel makes you feel like a superstar for a second. You know, people yeah. pull out the phone, <laughs> catch a snippet of you, right? Taking a picture of your shirt. Um, okay, so we we are here um, because first, let me say congratulations on your incredible weight loss achievement. Um, can you share with us your motivation behind starting your journey and how you managed to stay committed? What motivates you to stay committed? Yeah, sure. So uh, all in all, from my heaviest to uh, my leanest, um, I was 385 pounds. That was back in 2016. That was at my heaviest. And I lost a total of 165 pounds, all natural, through diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. And what kickstarted that was I just basically reached my lowest point. Just mentally, I wasn't happy uh, health-wise. You know, I wasn't sleeping right because of that weight. And, you know, drinking a lot, eating the wrong food in combination with those choices and you know, I just came to my end with that. I just wanted to change. So I started watching YouTube videos, um, figuring out how to start because that is like not an easy change, especially entering the healthy lifestyle and got into riding bikes, walking everywhere, um, and slowly implemented daily changes to my life, whether it was diet and just being a more active lifestyle overall. And then from there, I slowly got into uh, jogging, love, short distances, until I was able to do my first mile. Longer than that, half mile, uh, mile, 5K, 10K, and now I've gone up to a half marathon. And more recently, where we met, uh, Five Borough Bike Tour, which is 40 miles by bike, and that is one of the most recent achievements I've been able to do. And it's definitely not been easy. Very challenging, but very rewarding along the way. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <Thank> you. <laughs> Yo, um, that is not, like you said, it's not easy. Um, just just those activities that you're, you you know, the Fire Borough um, bike tour is, is not an easy tour. It's fun. <laughs> but 
<laughs> it's it definitely not was easy. not easy. It definitely <laughs> was not easy. Especially the horizontal bridge. I don't know about for you, but for me, I was like, oh, I feel like getting off this bike and walking. <laughs> I know that. that that's why I wish the easy pass kicked in because there was nothing easy about going over that bridge. It was just a never ending hill. <laughs> and then the, what was a few weeks ago, the Brooklyn half, right? You did the Brooklyn half? Yes. Yeah. That was uh, for New York Roadrunners. Uh, I did it from, I think it starts off in Prospect Park. It's about one big lap. And then you run straight down Ocean Parkway to um, Coney Island. And it started pouring. It was crazy. And it was worth it. <laughs> Once I got to that boardwalk, it was like another, like, uh, I would say 200 meters to the end. Felt amazing. Just, uh, again, like long awaited journey of reaching these bigger races and, and achieving them. Congratulations on that as well. I, uh, my listeners know I'm not a runner. So <laughs> I could, uh, I'd have to really train and like, and okay, so let's go back a little bit. Now, yeah, sure. when did you start documenting your journey on YouTube? Like when you first started, when you were like, all right, I'm gonna make this change. Let me start documenting this for myself and others. What, why did you start doing that? Okay, so a little bit to uh, more of my brand. I was, I, believe it or not, I started, I believe it was 2017 to 2018. Um, and I, again, this is like when I was only losing, I, again, you know, it's all a learning curve. So I am really like, was more successful in my weight loss until like the last two years. Again, mm-hmm. it was like a four or five year journey. But that first two years, I really like listened to people I shouldn't have. And I wasn't as confident. I did record some videos that was intentional for creating YouTube. And then I wound up not posting it because I wasn't sure like you know I got in my own head whether it was other people's inputs of you know if if I don't do this and I'm still the same weight you know you might look foolish and and whatnot Mm -hmm. and that's something I do regret because if I would have done it and been more confident look you know I made it this this way and this far I would have had more content you know Mm -hmm. so to anyone who's out there listening if they're doing the same thing or just starting their journey you got to tune all that out be on your own path and just follow through with it and from there when I would say more when my brand got more serious I would say it started I think I started my channel actually in the beginning of COVID which was a great time because I think it was in 2020 Mm -hmm. and everybody's home uh, had nothing to do so people were watching my channel and you know people wanted to know what things to do when the gyms were closed or maybe people were gaining weight while they're at home and want to figure out or healthy food options while they're home. You know, people now, now ordering takeout all the time and, you know, try to figure out how to chef it up in the kitchen, make healthier choices. And I would say from that point, that's when my content started getting more serious and more so recently with the implementing of the short form content with Mm -hmm. TikTok and YouTube shorts and Instagram, that's been a great help as well which is like a smaller condensed version of the longer form content that I was doing, you know, several minutes long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, got, you got to ride with them waves. Definitely. So. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you get in where you fit in. <laughs> That's a fact. Especially with uh, social media. Definitely. Okay. And I like that. I like that you are documenting your journey. Um, I've been to your YouTube page and I've seen like, how you look physically then and then now. And I think that's really important for anybody that's doing any type of like transformation to document it so people can see, you know, it's, you know, it might not come, well, it won't come overnight, you know, it won't come, you know, in these few months, but it, it, it will, you will eventually get there and whatever you're doing, if you stay consistent at it. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. I doubt, I think that's my niche of my channel. That I'm just trying to show people that I'm an ordinary guy, and I'm you know it's possible. And these are the results that you can get uh, when you do have a busy lifestyle, especially if you're a New Yorker. You know, people are working one two jobs and making time to do these things. And you know, another thing is just doing that nat- natural weight loss. It's it's a lot better too because it comes with that discipline, that healthy lifestyle that you won't get the other means of weight loss that 
um, you know, sometimes set people back. Sometimes people get like these surgeries, like gastric sleeve, you may lose the weight, but when you don't have that lifestyle change, you either gain it back or, you know, you you fall back on yourself with, you know, non-healthy food options too, you know? Yeah, definitely. I can see that. Um, so in addition to exercising, working out, taking up these activities, your diet, right? Mm-hmm. had to change um did you find like new creative ways to make meals did you you just cut out like went cold t- turkey and cut out certain things how did that come into play with your weight loss so the reoccurring theme here with with everything that i've done is baby steps mm-hmm. so <clears throat> when i first started i was trying to research more certain things I could do. So I was horrible at cooking. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm decent now. I'm decent now. So I'm not gassing it up. Okay. But you got better. At first. Yeah. So when I, when I first started, you know, I, I, I knew nothing. I didn't even know how to make a salad. My salad game was trash. It looked, <laughs> I had sad salads, you know, but I, I, I started researching more. So again, I, I didn't go cold Turkey. So mm-hmm. what I would do is I researched certain things. So I had a very, I, I still do have a sweet tooth and, Part of that uh, contributed to my weight, you know, being so excessive. And I was trying to figure out how do I solve that. One way I solved that to have a healthier option was resorting to fruits. Mm-hmm. So that knocked that craving out. I had I started eating fruits. So that was one of the slow changes. Um, I was addicted to fast food, instantaneous food, and me not knowing how to cook. So another way I did that, if I went to a deli, I tried to get a wrap, uh, you know, just if someone else is going to make me food, at least have a healthier option. Or if I didn't do that more with either, again, the answer to that one also was fruits, or I would have, um, anything like almonds, nuts, cashews, Mm -hmm. which is also instantaneous would fill my hunger versus like, Hey, let me go to McDonald's. And even if it was a 20 piece nuggets or whatever, McChicken, you know, I'm just using McDonald's as an example, and I slowly cut that out. Um, then when I was starting to cook, another thing I was doing, uh, there was a supermarket a few blocks over. I would walk every time to make my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm. So I would go to the store and get my eggs, and just for each meal, uh, that was one of the slow changes I did because I was getting more active and changed my lifestyle with that. And those calories added up versus um, – in both with the exercise going to the store and back and by having a caloric deficit, which is eating healthier and having uh, my meals controlled portions and the calories being lower than going outside and having unhealthy options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The eating, like (laughs) I have to eat better and I'm starting to eat better. People think because I'm, a, a thin person you're like oh you're so healthy I'm like uh <laughs> okay <laughs> but I, I same thing like you know I have a sweet tooth so let me eat these fruits um I'll eat the almonds the walnuts let me substitute because it the, the calories the the all the all the things that can could could um add up once you start eating all that processed food and all the sweets. Yeah, I'll, I'll still be thin, but I may have now diabetes or I may have some type of other um, medical issue because of my eating. So I'm, I'm with you. Replacing um, the not so good food. <laughs> with, the, with the healthier options. With the healthier options. It makes you just feel better overall too. Like I would, I remember feeling like sluggish and lazy whenever I put crap inside my body and then just seeing that change slowly. I just, you have more energy, you have more, you know, just a better outlook with everything. You know, you're not feeling as tired all the time and not as energetic. All of a sudden now you have all that energy and you just feel great. Yeah, you do. And, um, uh, with the exercising now you have with you you eating right and you're exercising you feel better you look better but you feel better <laughs> so 100 percent 
that's that's one thing I I say that it goes hand in hand mentally too, like clarity. I feel amazing in combination. I I come I'm completely cut out alcohol too, uh, mm -hmm. a little over a year ago, and that helped a lot. Of uh, just mentally, you feel better. You know, you just you're more again. I think that goes hand in hand with the discipline. That discipline just goes across the board. When you can be disciplined with something like that in your life, it starts domino affecting across. Uh, across the board with everything else every aspect of your life of being disciplined with everything else yeah i i definitely could see that um they say <laughs> how you how you do one thing is how you do everything right Absolutely. so you know um i want to switch topics a little bit um when we were speaking at the fireborough bike tour packet pickup I mentioned travel and you mentioned that you traveled a lot, right? Yeah. And you've been to multiple countries. How many countries have you been to? Over 40 countries. Over 40. Gotta, gotta catch up. <laughs> I'm still in the right. teens. <laughs> Over 40 countries. COVID, COVID slowed it down a bit, but you know, there's, there's still time out there, you know? Plenty of places to see. Yeah. Um, how did you get into traveling? Um, yeah. All right. So I'm a late bloomer. I didn't start traveling. I didn't get my first airplane until I was 22 years old. So I went to Miami. That was my first trip. So it was still within the States. So I had mm -hmm. a lot of catching up to do. And when I did, <laughs> I put that passport to good use and, uh, Started going everywhere. I actually used to work for the airline, so that's what made it really possible. Okay. And uh, yeah, I really got, I was fortunate enough to see at a young age and travel everywhere. Um, especially when I was working for them, I was able to travel so frequently, you know, less responsibilities and everything. And that was from 22 to 26. I traveled after that too, definitely not as much, you know, more responsibilities and everything else I'm working on. But mm -hmm. and COVID, COVID happened. But yeah, I've been to like some really dope places. Um, Explore, explored Asia, Europe, uh, South America. I even went to South Africa. That was one of my later trips. That was really amazing. Yeah. Sure. Do you have a favorite or have like a top five of your favorite places you've been to? 100%. My top three right off the bat is Australia, South mm. Africa, and Egypt. Ooh. Just And some of those reasons, uh, South Africa, really memorable uh because i did a safari that was just life-changing like i never have to buy a ticket to the bronx zoo ever again <laughs> I just, that, that it was amazing you know like that's irreplaceable right there australia i scuba dive and saw the great barrier reef in person that was just it looks just like the discovery channel it's just like really colorful all the mm. fish um yeah that was really dope and then egypt just one of the seven wonders of the world i saw like the pyramids and the sphinx and it was literally in the backyard my my friend that was one good thing i like about the airlines made a lot of great friends and you meet you have a lot of connections with what to do in every place and mm -hmm. we booked this really great hotel and literally you open up the windows to the back and it's like you're at the foot of the pyramids and it's like right there and it's so much larger in person like you don't compare oh i didn't comprehend it until i saw it and i just it's amazing just truly amazing definitely go there in the winter because it gets really hot it's in the desert and it was still like hot when we went there in like february i believe yeah i i've been to two out of the three places i've been to south africa i've been to egypt i have to go nice. to australia so that's on the list that is i got you with the list. tips got you with the tips girl oh okay thank you i appreciate that yes i am i'm looking forward to that um to that trip one day um so with you having gone to over 40 countries do you think you'll ever do anything with that as far as like content wise or yeah youtube channel and giving people yeah. tips and you know yeah i've thought about i thought about um even even uh touching upon you know just stories because i have a lot of great stories from all these places and i was fortunate enough to even visit these places at such an extended period of times at times. I even have some crazy stories where I went to, 
I went to uh, South Korea for uh, 20 hours and fly back. <laughs> just for 20. I kid you not. I just, me and my friends, I, I was uh, leaving the company to start my new job. And I had flight benefits for like the last 30 days. And I'm like, yo, where should we go? And my friend hopped on with me and we just went to South Korea and flew back. And we, we had a hotel. We threw our bags in the hotel room and just went everywhere. Went out and then slept on the plane right back. That was like another memorable trip. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was definitely, uh, definitely amazing. And then from there, I would land it back in New York. We went to, I met with another friend, went to Ireland. We went there for a day. We used to call them day trips. It's easy mm-hmm. to do when you're in the airlines and just customs look at you with two heads. Cause they're just like, well, how long, how, how long did you stay? I'm like, uh, not even a day. And they're like, what, what are you, what are you talking about? And then the minute you explain that you work for the airlines, they just say, oh, okay, that's how you're doing it. And then hop on the plane, ride back to the States. My day trip is going uh <laughs> going upstairs a couple hours. <laughs> going to DC. That's a day trip. You're like, I hey, was gonna to go to Ireland. Wow. That's yeah, so dope. some really crazy stories in my lifetime. Like and I think that's cool too. Like if, if I tell people, you know, like just like that. I feel like even people who live this crazy lifestyle of travel, like, you know, sometimes this is some of the best memories I had. Like I couldn't fly somewhere because you fly standby and then we would change the trip completely. We might change continents. Like that, you know what? can't go to Europe let's go to Asia you can't go to Asia we'll go to Europe we'll go to South America like and just can do it at a drop of a button just book another trip yeah you gotta you gotta start a blog or write a book or <laughs> podcast or something about that YouTube channel please so, I... <laughs> some of the I can't even use some of the photos because I'm like I'm like 385 there so I'm like yo people might not even believe it's me you know like, <laughs> like who, who's that guy he has hair he's really big you're like who is it <laughs> oh man oh that's so dope wow must have been a great experience but you said you're still traveling yes do you have anything on your um, travel bucket list coming up uh i want to do more of asia i've always wanted to do thailand i haven't been able to do that um i think that's it as far as like where i really want to go i mean there's like tons of places i still want to explore but like that's like one sure thing i want to do on my bucket list i heard your money goes really far and it's just amazing over there you have a lot of like beaches and stuff to go to and it's nice from what i heard i don't have you been there have you been to thailand i have not been to thailand i've been to vietnam um dope, so dope. it definitely your money goes a long way beautiful beaches um and i've gone to um cambodia nice. so i do want to explore more of asia as well um, well, I can say I've been to Thailand. People say I can't count it. But in order to get to Cambodia, I was in Vietnam. My friend and I were in Vietnam. So we had to fly to Thailand. And we got off at one airport, took a bus to another airport in Thailand, and then hopped on the um, flight to go to Cambodia. So I was in Thailand for like an hour, two hours, you know, on that bus ride. But I didn't see anything. So I, didn't, I, didn't, I can't, can't count it. It's time to go back, girl. It's time to go back. I know. Uh, I will, though. Um, yeah, I do want to, like I said, explore more of Asia. Definitely. Um, that's what's up, though. That is what's thank up. You, thank you. Yeah, I was thinking about doing that as content. I think it'd be it'd be good to like touch upon these things. I have like some some tips, like just... That was also really cool, too, because it changed my life, I feel, a lot. Because, you know, if I have a viewer who's from those countries, like, I can relate now. I'm not saying I'm, like, you know, a second citizen now with that thing. But, like, I'll have some things I can talk about. Like, Yo, I've been to these streets. I know where to go here, here. I'm just educated from my own experiences. And it's, like, a really dope either icebreaker. Maybe you talk to someone about something like that. who, Or they could just be as well-traveled as you and you talk to someone. And, you know, that's something that you could kick up conversations and talk about where you travel, where they travel. Yeah, traveling does to me, for me, it, it it expands my mind. Like, wow, I didn't know this about this country or I had these pre preconceived notions about this country, but it's totally different than what I thought, you know? And like you said, you can connect with people, relate with people from there or traveling to there. So traving is is freedom. Cycling for me is freedom. Skating for me is freedom. 
it's all movement. So I, I want to do more of the traveling. I've been slacking a little since COVID. My last trip out the country was to Cartagena, Colombia. That was and me too. I did it last, last yeah. September. <laughs> See, just, I did that in 2021. So that's my last trip out the country. So I got to get back into it. I got to say, by the way, your content is fire too. I've been seeing you with the, uh, was it the Instax 360 camera? You oh, yeah, with? yeah. The, yeah, NC360. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah, that, that thing's dope. You got some like crazy angles with the cycling, the rollerblading. Looks really sick and awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. I was like, let me try. I, I kept seeing people with it, with it, and I'm like, okay, let me try. And I was like, dang, this is good. <laughs> this, is, this is really cool. And it like hides the selfie stick too. I'm like, does this girl have a drone following her? <laughs> like how? These angles are crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still have to like watch some tutorials and really get into the like how to really use this camera. But I just usually turn it on <laughs> and record and go <laughs> and like worry said, about it and post. <laughs> like I said, baby steps. You know, you're right. Slowly figure it out and and still record all that content. Yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> baby steps, and that's for everything. I think. I'm- Across the board, yeah. Traveling, mm-hmm. recording, everything. Yeah. Weight loss, fitness. Yeah. Any journey that you're going on, baby steps. Um, so, what is your daily workout regimen these days? Uh, so I do a lot of calisthenics. Um, for those who don't know, that's just body weight exercises. Uh, I'm usually on the go. I, I also manage my fitness apparel brand. I'm also doing embroidery and custom vinyl work. So I either do it for other people's brand, my brand, or like what you saw with the shirt when I put that QR code. Um, filming fitness content for my channel and working, and sometimes working overtime on my regular job. It's so busy and hectic at times. That's why I resort to calisthenics. Mm-hmm. So I'll have a jump rope in my bag. I'll bang out. Just an exercise under 20 minutes, 15 minutes, depends how busy I am, and the running. So I'll fit my runs in either early in the morning or early in the night uh, before I go to into work or the work nights. And runs are straightforward. It could be anywhere simple as a – for me, it's a simple run now. is like a 5K, which is three miles, all the way up to a longer run, double digits, 10-plus miles. And if I'm not running, my calisthenics regimen usually is I bring, again, the jump rope or I'll do – if I don't have the jump rope, I just resort to um, jumping jacks. So I'll do that for like 60 seconds. Then I go into push-ups. Another 60 seconds of jumping jacks, do pull-ups, chin-ups. 60 seconds, do a plank. I'll just keep rotating and have different exercises like that. Dips, chair dips if I don't have a dip bar around me. And I'll do literally like three sets of each. And maybe I'll alternate different body parts. So I'll do like three sets with the uh, plank. I'll do three sets with the push-ups three sets with that but it, it, there's always that constant motion of never stopping of 60 seconds of some lighter exercise where it's just keeping my heart rate up where there's a jump rope jumping jacks high knees that's another one i like doing that just keep you uh keeps you active and again i, I like how portable that is in, in my sense of of the new yorker you know mm-hmm. always on the go and i could just go to the park and do that real quick now do you work out every day uh yeah every day safe to say because uh if i don't have that another thing i do is when i ride my bike i make time for that i'll i'll go for a cycle before or after work usually i try to reserve it for after work and i'll just i'll try to hit at least eight miles before i go home nice cruise around uh long island city story neighborhood and yeah i, I try i try to always get something in every day i feel like there's always something i can do to like mm-hmm. implement it in my life and it's such a mood booster too at that. Yeah. Know? So if I'm ever feeling down or not in the mood, the minute I, I push myself to do those exercises, I just feel more accomplished and more just like achieved. I'm like, all right, now what's next? You know, I feel great. Yeah, I feel that too. <laughs> After I finish skating or riding my bike, I'm like, all right, I want to come home. I'm like, all right, now I'll write a book. <laughs> because I have all this energy. <laughs> uh, for me, it's like, 
for me, it's like I come home, I have time to time to get to work on that laundry. That's, that's in there. let's go get <laughs> baby steps. Let's go for that first. All right. You're right. Um, do you have another um, goal? Like, are you at your ideal weight now? Or do you have um, a weight that you want to hit that you're still working towards? Or is it just maintaining? Uh, I would, I would say it's, um, I definitely wouldn't go down. Like now I'm getting lean again, but mm-hmm. it's just like, I'm trying to focus more on strength. So now I'm like picking up weights, which is something new to me. So now like as part of my journey it was a weight loss journey. Now it's, it's a fitness journey. I feel like it's mm-hmm. always been a fitness journey, but now I'm just focusing more on aesthetics, getting lean, putting on muscle, um, as far as like an ideal weight, it's hard to judge too. Cause right now I'm like 245 and I have loose skin. So mm-hmm. I have to sculpt my body more to see where I'm at. Cause when I saw my body when it was 220, I was just strictly like no muscle. I got like down to straight, like I was thin. So now I'm in the process of sculpting to see mm. how I look and just get lean. And again, with that leanness, it's like uh, when I change my diets, cause so sometimes I'll just go from eating meat again to pescatarian, pescatarian, which is uh vegetarian with fish mm-hmm. and shrimp so seafood and that gets me lean again and i'll try to see what we work on and again it's all new to me so i'm learning and i'm showcasing that on my channel if i if i mess up in the process it's cool because there's a learning curve to everyone uh to everything and just show everyone what's the results yeah yeah that's super dope and thank again you. yeah you're welcome thank you for thank you for doing that and I guess being vulnerable in that sense, like you're definitely putting yourself out there. It's like, hey, this is what I'm trying. We're going to see how this works out. (laughs) And it gets people, I think it'll motivate someone else to be like, all right, cool. If this guy is doing it, let me try, you know? And like you said, baby steps. So, yeah. Thank you for doing that. Thanks. It gives me motivation to do Maybe not that specific journey, but something else. Like, all right, Tasia. And like like we we spoke, you're like, yo, you gotta get on camera more. I was like, Yeah, I know. <laughs> He's just 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 talk to the camera. Doesn't matter. Just go out there and talk to your camera in the street, vlog, do all this other stuff. And I'm like, You're right. I should be doing that. And someone else told me that as well. Well, multiple people have told me that as well. So, you know. And that's the thing, you gotta tell yourself that. Because yeah. it's 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 just that goes back to like the earlier part of uh, we were talking the podcast where I allowed myself to listen to people. I mean, I'm not saying don't listen to your friends. You know, you have, if you have some really good friends. It's always good to hear their input, but certain aspects like I had some like bad people without around me where I wasn't confident in myself and I should have had that confidence. Like, yo, this is what I want to do. I can do it. It's possible. I should record this. And that would have made it more relatable too. Cause again, you're just getting down to the nitty gritty and just, this is what it is. And this is, and it's okay if you fall, you know, everyone fail. There's setbacks, you know, yeah. that makes it more relatable versus like this perfect quote unquote, perfect lifestyle of just, Oh, now you're being overweight. Now you're jacked. Oh, look, it was easy. And it's like, well, how'd you get there? How'd, how'd you do this? How'd you do that? You know, what were your mm-hmm. bad days? Like, what were your good days? Like, mm-hmm. what was the process? Right. You know? And, um, <clears throat> this is this quote, I think it says some, it's like, um, failure, is um it's like failure is um <clears throat> excuse me failure is uh, damn I, I can't remember the, the damn the damn quote but it's something like since you failed we know you tried if you if you never failed then chances are you didn't try right so i think a lot of times we're worried about failure but if you failed at least you tried something. Now you can try something different. So that. This, mm-hmm. no, this is what I tell people to that point. It's you shouldn't be fail. You shouldn't be scared to be failing. You should be scared of never even trying because yeah. trying is the hardest part. Try, it's not even trying, starting. Starting is literally the hardest part. You're going to fail. Everyone fails. But it's like getting up and just figuring it out. You have to have that confidence that you're just, mm-hmm. you're going to figure it out. No one's stupid out there. Everyone's capable of it. You can always educate yourself more. Don't think you're ever stupid. Like I wasn't, I even know how to make a salad, man. Couldn't make a salad. 
my salads are still aren't the greatest, you know, but like, I figured, I figured it out. I figured it out. Like, you know, just, you have to try and learn. And with those experiences, you get better. Yep. And, and that's why I travel consistent. so much. That's mm-hmm. why I travel so much. I was like, how do you make a salad? I was going to all these places. How do you make a salad? <laughs> how do we get this done? um yeah and staying consistent and disciplined so it's a whole combination of things that that um you gotta do but um i'm right there with you uh so i'll be put i'll be putting more content out there on youtube i'll be putting more content out there on youtube um 100 percent Um, are there any upcoming races that you are aiming for this year? Um, so I wanted to go for the marathon that, and that doesn't seem like it's happening unless I get magically, um, uh, I think it's called lottery spot yeah. in there, mm-hmm. but I mean, there might be another marathon I could go with it around the country i don't know if there's one maybe in long island i might try to still aim for that but the ones i definitely have scheduled for is other half marathons with both of the major new york run companies uh mm-hmm. new york city runs and uh new york road runners um yeah that's pretty much it for the running i don't really have any other races that my, my last goal because i have a vision board is i want to run a marathon more specifically the new york marathon i want that under my belt I think that'd be like a really good achievement, like of running a marathon. Yeah. <clears throat> um, that was on my vision board a long time ago. <laughs> but I got, like I said, I got to get into running. But um, that's really dope. Like, I, I hope you get in this year, but you will get in. So it's just a matter Again, of when, you know. That's why you can't, you know, like I, in that sense, let's say you want to quote unquote, depends how you look at it, quote unquote failed. Like I didn't get it. Oh, I failed. But yeah. it's cool. Like, you know, if I'm healthy and I'm around, obviously, it's always next year. You know, like I got to yeah. just keep working hard. Yeah, I got to be in shape longer. I don't think I'm ever going to stop. Like I don't want to, but like I have to prepare proactively longer now for next year's, but that's okay. That doesn't mean it's over. That doesn't mm-hmm. mean just got more time to practice and possibly get an even better time next year. You know, you just got to stay focused on the positive on that situation. You know, you can't let it get discouraged now. Oh, there is one other thing I want to try to go for this year. Uh, I, I got hurt last year and I want to do was the uh, New York city runs has this event called the empire state building uh, run up. Oh, you okay. can run up the empire state building. I think it's usually in October. I want to go for that. If I can get it in this year, they have some lottery spots for that as well. Wow. I never heard of that. Wow. <laughs> really really dope i was training for that i did 100 floors in the gym in about 21 minutes so i was really like getting faster and faster with that time doing that uh, let me write this down uh what is it yeah. called you said the empire yeah i believe it's empire state run-up it's through new york city runs nyc runs wow and that will be on my channel and if i could bring in my uh like DJI action and get some like six footage of that because it's really dope. Oh, I hope you, I hope you can. <laughs> so I want to see that. <laughs> Cause at nighttime you run up the, like you literally run up the stairs all the way from the base to the top. And then the finish line is up there. I don't know if they have like a ribbon or something you're crossing, but it, it's crazy. And I don't think a lot of people get selected to do it, which that was a bummer last year. Like, cause that was one of the people that I got selected um, the mm-hmm. lottery spot, but hopefully, you know, again, there's always this year. If I can yeah. get a get access to it again, that'll be really dope. Yeah. Oh man, I'm gonna look into that. That's that's pretty cool. Like Empire State Building at night. What? <laughs> 80, 80, 86 floors, I believe it is. Ooh. Sixteen hundred steps, I believe. Sixteen hundred steps. All right. Intense. <laughs> that is. Sheesh. Oh man. Yeah, I'm gonna look that up. So any advice for anyone starting on a weight loss journey or any journey? Like we said, we know the baby steps, but if you can give someone one piece of advice for starting your journey, what would it be? 
Uh, if we're talking more on the weight loss aspect, yeah, uh, definitely document everything. Take the photos, take videos, especially the photos. I wish I took a lot more photos. And I even uh, post just for yourself because anytime I was down and I didn't see how far I was coming, especially being with that weight, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a massive goal that you're trying to accomplish. But when you have those photos to reference and you see how much work is paying off within the week, two weeks, a month, it's a sure way of you staying on task and realize, that, okay, it sucks but it's working and I am making a difference. I, to this day, I still keep my one set of my old clothes. It's a three XL. Uh, I think it was a dress shirt. I have some flannel shirt and uh, my, I has like size, I think it was like 50 waist, 48 weight, some crazy. And I'll look back. I'm like, yeah, you know, like that, that was me. Like I didn't buy those just to like have on the side. Like that was literally one of my daily clothes I was wearing. And, um, with the baby steps and just staying consistent, staying consistent, tuning out all the, if you have any hate, any negativity, any negative people, just tune them out, tune them mm -hmm. out. If you listen to yourself, you know, what's right. You know, you know, what's paying off, you know, what to do. You know, everyone's gonna have an opinion. Everyone's going to tell you something. Some, some people, again, I'm not saying if you have some really good friends, you're fortunate, you know, definitely take their advice. If, it, if it's, you know, something that's on, along with what you agree, and what you're trying to do. But remember why you started and why you're doing it and, and, and follow through with everything you do. And it doesn't have to be something like I did where it was 165 pounds. Cause again, to see that transformation took years, you know, just even with the small things, just follow through what you want to do, even if it's small, but make sure you follow through and be a person of your word. And you'll see how much your life changes because you follow through with what you say. Whether it be, uh, this year I want to do 10 countries. Well, go out there and do it because that's something that you want to do. You know, mm -hmm. Tomorrow's not promise. Do 10 countries in a year or whatever your goal is and knock that out of the park. And then, cool, now I want to do 15 countries, 20 countries, whatever it is. So it applies relatively around everything. And it's possible, man. It's definitely possible. You put your mind to anything. And, yeah, I'm going to have another update soon, hopefully, with you. I'm working on something right now with my fitness thing. Okay. Um. Hopefully it's something that's really, uh, really takes off, but hopefully, but again, you got to have that mindset that it's going to get done and yeah, everything follows suit. That's right. Well, I'm looking forward to what you got coming and, um, I'll be watching, I'll be rooting. And, um, like I said, you know, I know you're inspiring a lot of people. You're inspiring me and, um, where can the people find you? Yeah, sure. So um, if you go on YouTube, it's Harry Hales, H-A-R-R-Y space H-A-I-L-Z. Uh, on Instagram, it is the same, except there's an underscore that separates that Harry and Hales. I'm on TikTok, and that's Harry Hales with no space in between. Same way it's spelled H-A-R-R-Y, uh, H-A-I-L-Z. All right. Nice. Um, definitely keep me updated while well, I follow you, so I will be updated. But <laughs> I love for you to come back on and we could do a visual next time. Because like I said, I'm getting into the visuals, so we could do a visual and uh, I'll come out to Queens and yeah. Yeah, cool for sure. And again, that goes back to when we met and I was telling you that, mm -hmm. like, you know, seeing your i'll be proud and happy to be part of your process too you know going from audio to visual and then we're gonna be in that studio one day you know with the big plexiglass with the you know everything yes yes speak that into existence i like that harry <laughs> i like that for sure for sure baby steps but <laughs> you'll get that that's for everyone yeah are there any last words before we wrap up yeah, man, we got goals to hit, Hales Fitness. And remember, stay consistent, stay dedicated. Anything is possible, people, anything. That is a fact. Thank you again for being a guest. Thank you for having me. Of course. This is the Rolling With Tay podcast. I'm your host, Tasia, a.k.a. Tay, and thanks for listening.